I'm going to go through this very qu very quickly um, because I think we're going to we're running short on time, and I think the most one of the apart from the the reports, the most important part of the day for me is the panel discussion on reporting press freedom challenges and violations. So while I'm racing through this presentation, I won't mind if Joe and Barbara occupy seats up here. Um, and what how we how we'll do that panel is that we will um we'll have some just brief opening statements. I will moderate it. You want to do that now? Um, no. Uh, while while Richard is is setting that up, maybe um, if you if you want, you can move up front from now, so we won't have we won't spend any time arranging things. Hi. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have a plea for help. For some reason, I can't get my computer to connect to the internet, so I'm unable to tweet this meeting and do a lot of other things. Okay. We've, this gentleman's tried to help, no help. Okay. Anybody? The technical person from here, he's going to come and help you with that in a short oh, while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just one more voice of wider dissemination. Sure. Okay, where are we? Um, yes, we have two, yeah. Do you want us to have a uh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, dark. Thank you. So, uh, so we take a chair? Yeah, and Barbara can come here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Either side, whichever. Oh. Okay. And um, when, when, for the opening, for that panel, um, the little opening remarks, you can come up here because I think um, Neilan would have to capture, it would be easier for him to capture it for the, um, for the streaming. Yeah. Is it, what is his name? Neilan. Neilan. Are you sure you can't capture when we talk at this level? No, the, the audio is going to be a problem. Yeah, Will the, the audio is not here? The audio. No, the audio. Oh, but for the stream. For yeah. the stream. For the streaming, we need the audio. What about turning the mic around this way so that we we, we speak like this? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just trying to be as difficult as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks so. Um, Neilan, <laughs> um, what he's proposing is that we do this and I and we focus the microphone. Then, right? Okay. See, but you can give us a level, and if it's hopeless, we'll do some, whatever you tell us. Yeah. At least I will. Come. I will go to my house. Okay. So. Um, okay. Richie, let's. Um, uh, so much for our conference, huh? Okay. Yes. What's this happening? He will help you with the internet. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> 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 I'll just speed through this. I think it's important for us because um, the the next executive committee of, of the ACM will have to make certain priorities. And um, one of the things that, one of the main areas of our focus is the work we do with and on behalf of the IFEX network. So this presentation uh, makes, uh, clarifies our relationship with IFEX and the nature of the work that the network um, does. Next slide. So we see that IFEX really is a network, a network of organizations and the basic um, 
commitment is the defense and promotion of freedom of expression as a fundamental human right. Next slide. Now, we, don't, we probably don't need to, this, a lot of this don't need to be said, but sometimes we need to say it even among ourselves because we propose, uh, we, we, we fight for freedom of expression, we make a big fuss about it. Uh, freedom of the press, of course, is one of those um, one of those ancillary freedoms that arise out of the bigger, the broader freedom of expression. But in responding to people who ask, you know, why this fuss about freedom of expression, I think it's important for us to be prepared with certain kinds of responses. Um, freedom of expression is important because it enables citizens to understand their communities and the world around them. And in the process, by understanding all of this, the reality of our existence within communities and, and, with the, and as citizens of the world, we'll be able to make better decisions to inform our, day, to inform our daily lives. Freedom of expression is, is essential. In fact, it's, a, it's an important prerequisite to good government and economic and social progress. And if you, we were just um, led through Article 19 of the International Convention on Human Rights um, by uh, Suzanne Sherland, and I think the explanation there, you know, simply by getting a grasp of what Article 19 is all about, you will see how important it is that freedom of expression exists in order that there is good government and that there is progress as well. Freedom of expression, of course, is, is also very difficult to de-link from other human rights. There is almost always a freedom of expression dimension to whatever the human rights challenge of the time is. So that um, people who assert other rights, other human rights, not only human, um, political rights, but economic, social, and um, cultural rights, you will see that there is very much a connection with freedom of expression. Next. Okay, a little bit about IFEX. It, um, the members of IFEX bring their individual strengths to free expression issues. And as a result, we are able to collaborate in the common goal of defending and promoting free expression. And it's very important that to recognize the, the place of the ACM in all of this. Prior to the entry of the ACM within the IFEX network, it is not that the Caribbean was not recognized as an area of concern, but I think that what the ACM was able to do is to bring the perspective of media workers to the question of freedom of expression as an aspiration in the Caribbean. And I think that we have performed creditably in that regard, but there are still shortcomings. And one of the purposes of this entire exercise that started yesterday and continues in today, into today is to build awareness among our constituents as to the requirements of um, free expression, the promotion of freedom of expression, and its broader meaning for our society. IFEX is very unique in that it's the, it's the only organization of its kind that brings together the variety of international and local freedom, freedom of expression groups. There are national organizations and there are regional organizations. And IFEX, um, for example, has um, as part of its work, the work of the IFEX ALC Amer Latin American Caribbean Alliance which includes very much the ACM, and we have served um, one term as part of the IFEX ALC Coordinating Committee. The work of the IFEX A Coordinating Committee in Latin America and, Cari and the Caribbean is considered to be among the more dynamic um, activities of IFEX networks uh, around the world. And uh, we are in discussion with other regions, Africa in particular at this moment, with respect to sharing our experiences and um, perhaps relaying some best practice models with respect to how we approach projects and, and the work that we do as a sub-region in the world. Next slide. Um, the promotion and, the, and, and defense of freedom of expression is not only a matter for media workers, journalists, but it's a matter that concerns many, many other people in public and private life in the world and in the Caribbean. As a result, uh, what the impact of the ACM, ACM's engagement 
in the IFEX network and this perspective of freedom of expression having to do with everyone, the average citizen, the artist, the, the writer, the scholar, um, the educator, uh, people in all um, ranges of human uh, public life, is that the ACM has had to expand its scope and to be a little broader in its outlook with respect to freedom of expression issues. So recently, for example, one of the issues I brought to the IFEX network was the detention of a trade union leader in Trinidad and Tobago who was taken into custody because he wore as a symbol of um, the silencing, what he considered to be the silencing of trade unions in Trinidad and Tobago. He put a bandana around his face and um, the police um, carted him away and kept him in, in detention for a short while. They did not lay charges but they did detain him br briefly and um, this was a matter that was brought to the attention of, of IFEX and I did get some advice back from the IFEX Secretariat with respect to the what were the specific breaches of human rights that occurred because there's absolutely no doubt that notwithstanding the fact that it's, this is not a media worker, this is not a journalist, he's not a member of the ACM but our concern must extend beyond um, the work of media workers because there are implications in the long run for incidents like this passing unnoticed um, with particularly with reference to freedom of expression though there are freedom of association and freedom of, of assembly questions that came into um, focus during that particular episode so that's that's an issue um, now the, the one of the challenges though and we have all the national associations here or most of them is that our national associations in my view need to come a little bit more on board with this challenge of promotion of freedom of expression not only for the media worker or for the media enterprise um, freedom of expression concerns um, extend to the, to the broader society and um, we all know what happens when we ignore the plights of others who are engaged in, in, um, in work that is not always um, seen in a favorable light by officialdom um, today it might be them tomorrow it, it can be us so how do we draw attention? The, the IFEX, um, IFEX publishes material via its website, uh, via email um, um, dissemination, and you'll see that if you sign on to the IFEX dispatches, you'll get a very a regular supply of news and information on freedom of expression violations and the way in which these violations are being addressed all over the world. We act together. These photographs were taken at the um, the last IFEX um, meeting in, um, in Cambodia and there was um, a question regarding the detention of a community activist who was um, um, in a dispute over land settlement rights. Um, look how remote that is from the practice of journalism or the practice of, of artists and other people who consider themselves to be vulnerable and that matter was, was taken up as, as a question of a violation of freedom of expression. Freedom of expression being so cross-cutting and all-embracing. Um, the, the matter is taken up through conferences, workshops, encounters such as these. Um, we are, you know, um, we have the, the, the advantage of having somebody like Barbara Trionfi here who has considerable experience in the field of press freedom, but I, I'm sure that she's um, able to recognize even in the pursuit of press freedom issues, the broader freedom of expression perspectives which, which are there. Because after, at the end of the day, as Article 19 re reminds us, and uh, we need to bear in mind, that freedom of expression is not only the right of the person who is expressing his or herself, but it's also the right of people who are in search of information to, to improve the quality of their lives and to make decisions, and also their accessing of that information. So it involves uh, this whole entire matrix of the communication process, the dissemination of information, the, the, the pursuit of information, and the receiving of information. And when put that way, you will see that when we look at people who are vulnerable to, um, to freedom of expression violations, they're everybody. Everybody. Um, as a result of the experience of IFEX over the years, it has been able to respond in a very timely manner and to mobilize a wide range of expertise on these issues. So um, the IFEX network is not 
press freedom only it's not only people who are in, in freedom of expression but you'll find people who have other areas of concern who are involved with the IFEX network next slide um, the, the, the a survey that was conducted in 2012 I think it was among the IFEX membership found that 61% of its members uh, had, had reported that the network helped them protect individuals or groups who are under threat 75% said their visibility had, had improved as a result of their participation in the IFEX network. One of the advantages that membership of IFEX brought to the ACM is the fact that the ACM um, really went out there to the rest of the world um, in a way that it was not, would not have been possible had we decided that we were going to be an island unto ourselves. Now this, uh, there's a message in this for the national associations that are affiliated with ACM. Because I think that despite the fact that we've been working for 12 years on, on networking of national associations <coughs> and focal points throughout the Caribbean, there is a little bit of a deficit when it comes to the, the level of collaboration we have among ourselves and the learning that takes place among ourselves. There's quite a lot more work that needs to take place. And part of the reason why this is a challenge is that too many of our national associations see themselves as islands unto themselves and, and and of course this is reflected in the broad reflected in the broader national social and political landscape we are small island states and low-lying coastal regions as both will always remind us um, that are vulnerable um, that are susceptible to all kinds of very unique problems related to small size and, and, uh, and small resources and limited resources. It, 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 is, it is almost ridiculous for us to consider ourselves to be capable of solving our problems all by ourselves. I mean, they, they, I, and likewise, our national associations need to uh, come to that recognition as well. I mean, so many times I see that there are challenges by uh, organizations. And we are the last to hear about it. And that's because um, we're trying to fix this thing, you know, um, because we believe that that's okay. We, we don't really need the extra exposure because we, we'll put together a quick fix to this. And then you find that you, you block this end of the problem and it pops up that way. And that's because you don't have the benefit of the experience of others who have traveled that road in the Caribbean and then through networks like IFEX and our affiliations at IPI and other organizations um, can tell you, well, look, li listen, you are looking in the wrong direction. In order to plug this hole here, you need to deal with the, with the, the breach further down the line or further up the line. So visibility has improved. No doubt the ACM is, is out there, the ACM and its partners. Yeah, IFX has also helped to build awareness and engagement for specific free expression cases and issues, and Cambodia um, provided um, uh, more than one example where because of their association with the IFEX network, the, the domestic issues were internationalized in a way that would have otherwise been very difficult in the kind of systematic way. Now finally, um, I'm going to close after this, one of the pilot projects, one of the flagship projects of IFEX is this whole question of bringing to international attention the incidence of impunity. In some cases, the rising incidence of impunity. In the Caribbean, we have not always considered ourselves to be vulnerable to this the phenomenon of impunity. Um, basically, impunity in the sense of people getting away for violations of freedom of expression and other rights, um, sometimes in collaboration with state agencies. And in the Caribbean, in 2012, for the very first time, we were included in the impunity reporting of IFEX, and we did so via um, or, or citing the, um, the case of Freddie Kisoon in Guyana, reminding all people all the while that we also had the lingering issue of Jean Dominique in Haiti and um, Brignol Lindor in Haiti as well, and um, Ronald Waddle in Guyana. Though not a, a, a journalist by any means, um, Ronald Waddle was a, a, a political activist in Guyana, who was a talk show host, television, um, who was killed. His, his murder has never been solved, though people have, might have some clues as to who committed the murder. Um, that's a case of impunity. It might not be, we, sometimes we raise these issues with national associations and we get a question coming back, well, you know, this thing really don't have to do with journalists, so why are we 
making a big fuss about X case or Y case. And I think that if we remain blinkered in that kind of way, we're going to confront a, a more direct problem at some point in the, in the future. Because if we allow people to get away with punishing others because of things that they have said or written or things that they have displayed through art or whatever it is, our time will come. In many cases, sooner rather than later. So we will continue as ACM, notwithstanding questions that are raised sometimes from the national associations, highlighting these issues. Um, even in the case that we cited in 2012, there were questions asked by members of the journalistic community in, in Guyana. Uh, well, you know, the person in question is not a working journalist, he's a columnist, a newspaper columnist, and an academic. And they were, asked, they were saying, well, why are we concerned about this? Um, you know, he's not, quote unquote, one of us. Um, but I think if you take the broader view of freedom of expression and the, the impact of freedom of expression violations, we are very much part of that picture. There's no way we can escape um, that. There's a case, and we're going to bring it up this afternoon. I propose to raise it at least. The question of the Electronics, uh, Electronic Crimes Act in Grenada where the feedback from our national association there was one that um, was it, it confused me greatly and um, you know I still remain very disturbed that something that has an impact on people expressing themselves online is not viewed as as a threat to people working journalists um, this, it's very difficult for you to, to, to draw that line because the people who take action and the people who try to punish you for saying what you have said or writing what you have written, they don't make the distinction between who's the working journalist and who's the quote-unquote citizen journalist or who's the blogger or who's the pamphleteer. Um, so we need to be mindful of that. So we are very much part of the impunity um, environment worldwide. Um, we just click close here. Um, the, the genesis of, of the International Data End Impunity campaign and its annual observances on November 23rd goes back to the, um, the, the massacre in the Philippines back in 2009, yes. Um, 58 people were killed. Most of you uh, would remember, you know, a very tragic event, 58 people, including 32 journalists and media workers who were shot and, uh, to death and hacked and, and, you know, very brutally murdered. Um, and so November 23rd, ACM, um, I'm going to, you know, people here are going to comprise the next, ex next executive of the, of the ACM. Um, I would say that I, I would strongly urge that that international day to end impunity become a more um, engaged time for us, that we keep our eyes open very wide for instances in which authorities and others have gotten away with murder practically because of things people have said and have written and have painted and have expressed themselves in one way or the other. I think it, we don't have to stretch our imaginations too much to arrive at the conclusion that in the Caribbean, even in the English-speaking Caribbean, with all the, our record of democracy and our regard for human rights, etc., etc., um, impunity is very much a part of our existence. So I just want to end there. Um, we had some videos and so on, but we're going to, perhaps if we have time later. What I propose to do now is that we go into the, um, into the panel discussion, which looks at reporting press freedom ch challenges and violations. Why we chose this subject um, is that they, we have a problem. And the reporting that we're talking about here is not only journalistic reporting, even though journalistic reporting is necessary and very desirable, but reporting as national associations looking at the situations in your country and bringing it to the attention of the IFEX network of international press freedom <coughs> organizations, either through the ACM or directly. The ACM is there almost as a clearinghouse because what would happen, and the, the IFEX ALC has developed a protocol for reporting freedom of expression violations. So perhaps if you, if you desire, it can be sifted through that process, the IFEX ALC process, 
so that the IFEC Secretariat in Toronto is not does not face a deluge of of reports that have not um, that have not come up measured up to the expectations. So maybe um, Barbara will talk a, a little bit more about that. Um, but um, so I want to ask her, uh, Barbara Trionfi, who is Press Freedom Manager at the IPI and convener of IFEX, to talk to us a bit about reporting Press Freedom challenges and violations. And I think I will just nail on. Can I can come up there? You're gonna come up. Okay. See if it's easier. Yeah, just yeah. for the beginning. Okay. Then. Barbara. 